Hola a todos. Bienvenido. Welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Francie. Thank you so much for joining me today on un otra episode, another episode of the Out of Spec podcast. I'm speaking Spanish because today we're talking about Mexico, specifically GM Mexico, a subsidiary of GM, has partnered with Tesla to build out a thousand charging points in the country of Mexico. Country are, um, country. Mexico already has EVs on the road, a lot of plug-in hybrid EVs, but not a ton of market share. They do have chargers throughout the country, mostly level, lower level, one and two, slower charging, as we'll see. But this is interesting. What is does this partnership mean? What does it look like in Mexico with plug-in hybrids and EVs? What's that market like? And also, what about production? Mexico, as you may or may, may not know, a lot of auto manufacturing does go on in Mexico, especially for U.S. auto manufacturers. So let's plug into the details of today's episode. Vamos. Come on, y'all. This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. Okay, everyone, like I said, GM Mexico has partnered with Tesla to build out 1,000 charging points, which is pretty cool if you ask me. Um, I think that it's an interesting partnership and it makes me think, okay, there's going to be some Tesla superchargers out there in the world. If we look at PlugShare here, which I will pull up my trusty PlugShare. I love PlugShare. Um, I would suggest everyone to use it. It's basically the Yelp of EV charging, but we can see that our neighbors in the South, Mexico, do not have as many charge points as we have, but we all know how important charging infrastructure is for EV adoption. So they're moving in that direction. But with a thousand more charging points in Mexico, we'll see what that turns out um, to look like with Tesla and GM. Mexico currently has around 2,500 charging points, and most of them are actually level one or level two, like I mentioned earlier. And most of them are actually free, according to Mexico Business News. It's normal to see free charging, as we have seen in a lot of different regions and countries, in very, very early stages of EV adoption. And these are usually converted to stations where you have to pay <laughs> in the future, but it's to kind of spark adoption and have this amenity out there and available to everyone in the beginning. Investments are necessary to get this new kind of market and industry underway. And it's a way to increase the number of charge points for electric vehicles in Mexico to help people feel more confident in buying the EVs and also to have the amenities for the people who already have EVs. But it does always bring up the question of the chicken and the egg that I want y'all's opinion on as well. Is it that we build out a bunch of charge points and then the EVs come? Or is it we sell a lot of EVs and then we build out the charge points? Or is it simultaneous? How does it? How do you think is the best way for that all to unfold? I'm sure we have a, many, many different examples across the world, but I'm interested in, in what you think would be the most successful fashion with which to roll out a whole EV market. Mexico car sale, according to Clean Technica, uh, they sold 1.4 million light and heavy duty vehicles in 2023, and of them, just under 20,000 were electric vehicles. But this is up 94% year over year. What is this telling us? That now that they are at about one and a half to two percent of EV market share, and that it's increasing, is that this this market is maturing rapidly in this country. Okay, that means we got to get the amenities up, and we have to give people the options that they want when it comes to their EVs. The U.S. is about seven percent of EV adoption right now, and so comparatively, you know, they're they're both low. Mexico is lower, but then you look at Norway, which is like over eighty-two percent, and you can kind of put that into perspective. But it is growing rapidly, which is interesting. The latest investment that we have seen with General Motors now and GM Mexico specifically, this is a Mexican subsidiary of the US-based company General Motors. So currently in Mexico, it is one of the, the largest automaker production plants uh, of the United States conglomerate GM outside of the US. So they have four production plants storage facilities, and a, a wide network of concessionaries throughout Mexico for its work. So GM Mexico is a very big partner of GM North America, uh, the original parent company. 
just for some context there. GM does already sell the Cadillac Lyric in Mexico. You might or you may or may not be familiar with this EV, but it is kind of a premium four-door SUV. It, they call it a luxury SUV. It's starting from $57,000 MSRP in the U.S., um, but that's in the U.S. Generally, I think this has been a liked car. I think it's easily approachable for someone who hasn't driven electric before and who likes Cadillac. You know, it still has some of the luxury bits. I know that I, I'm not a car reviewer, but I think it's pretty decent. It's got a big battery, 100 kilowatt hours usable in all models. And with the single motor, you get about uh, 13, no, 314 miles of EPA estimated range. And then you lose about seven miles, 307 miles for the dual motor option. Of course, this is a premium model. What about affordability? I'm always yapping in my mouth about affordable EVs. Well, GM does have plans to launch more affordable options like the Chevy Equinox EV and the Chevy Blazer EV in Mexico soon, and those are planned to be built in Mexico. This is interesting because according to Global Fleet, who talked to the AMIA, which is the the Asociación, Asociación Mexicana de la Industria Automotriz, which is the Association of Mexico, their automotive industry, um, basically. And so a representative told Global Fleet that Mexico exported 100% of its EV production in 2023. 100%. Which means that of the over 100,000 units made in Mexico of EVs, they were exported. They weren't sold in the country. So it's interesting now that GM will not only be making Chevy Equinox EV and Blazer EVs in Mexico, but also selling them there. So Mexico, again, picking up more with the EV uh, industry. Plug-in hybrid vehicles are the biggest sales uh, really over, over EVs. Uh, Plug-in hybrids are more popular and hybrids, the hybrid sec segment is more popular as well. They also have brands including BYD, Great Wall Motors, GAC, SEV, uh, and Geely, which are Chinese automaker brands that we don't get in the U.S. So they have a bit of a different lineup. Um, but Clean Technica, Technica, I was looking at an article from them, and they actually did find that um, there are some popular EVs compared to others in, in Mexico. So if we see this, we can look here. The top 10 are, the number one is the Tesla Model Y, but just 2,000 units. And then it goes down, we can see the Mini Cooper. There's got Volkswagen, BMW, Volvo, JAC, Tesla Model 3, Volvo, 40 Transit. These are all cars that are listed in the top 10, and I just listed them from least popular to most popular. Uh, but it's still not huge, although it does seem like Tesla's presence is significant in this market as they are really in, in any market. Tesla is very good at selling their EVs. The Model Y is the most sold EV and car in the world at this point with over 2 million units sold. So it kind of makes sense that it would track to Mexico. And perhaps that Tesla would start to really look at the charging infrastructure there a little bit more. So it's interesting to see GM partnering with Tesla. This is not the first time that they have partnered with Tesla. GM has in North America agreed to adopt the North American charging standard, standard J3400, the Tesla connector into their future vehicles. And then they will get access to the supercharger network in time with adapters as well. But the only automakers that currently have access to the supercharger network are Rivian and Ford. So it does look like that at least GM Mexico and Tesla have a strong relationship, which also points to GM and Tesla having a strong relationship. They were one of the first automakers to announce that they were switching over, which was interesting because GM also has a partnership with a different charge point operator that has been going on for years. That was a CCS and Chatamo charge point provider, EVGo. GM partnered with EVGo to triple the size of their network, building over 3,000 fast charging stations by the end of 2025. I wonder where they are along that. I used to work at EVGo. A lot of hard work going into building out that charging network. You will see um, if they're sponsored or subsidized by GM that it will say GM Energy. It used to say Ultium, but I think they're moving away from that branding and more towards GM Energy. You'll also see this at Pilot Flying J stations because... The travel center company, Pilot Flying J, GM and EVGo, there's a joint partnership there to build out charging stations at these travel stops. So either Pilot or Flying J travel centers along U.S. corridors, like 50 miles apart with um, typically four stalls charging stations. And you'll see GM Energy on there. So that's a big partnership as well. So it's not the first time that GM has said, 
we are going to invest in infrastructure and we're going to partner with a charge point oper a charge point operator. So here to build out in Mexico, I'm wondering if you think that GM has found the right partner in Tesla. Does it does it make sense to you? I mean, maybe. I want to know what you think. And what do you think of Mexico's further EV adoption? Like I said, they're around one and a half to two percent EV market share. The U.S. is at seven. Countries like Norway are above 80. Um, what do we see for Mexico? With the presence, the high presence of auto manufacturing in Mexico and the emphasis to, I mean, the U.S. is putting tariffs on countries like China. We're getting more specific about where our critical materials and minerals come from to go into EV batteries and also EV recycling. Mexico is a whole lot closer to than really any other country besides Canada. So they have been a resource for the U.S. economy for a while. So how will this begin to shift in the EV world? What do you know about it um, that I didn't mention here when it comes to Mexico and EVs? Please let me know in the comments. I'm curious. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the fast charging infrastructure specifically builds out in Mexico because as I was showing you, Mostly level one J1772 chargers, um, which are these green dots when you pull up plug share versus the orange ones that are the, the faster charging options, the DC fast charging. Okay, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of the Out of Spec podcast. Muchísimas gracias. Let me know what you think about this and can't wait to, can't wait to hear your thoughts. I think this is kind of cool. Our neighbor's and tracking how they are moving with their EV industry, market share, adoption. Very interesting to me. Thanks again. Drive safe, stay charged. I'll see you next time on the next episode. Adios.